What's up everybody, John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us today. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how we set up the electric fence for our bee yard. Before I get too far into anything, a uh, little disclaimer, I am not an expert, I am not an electrician, so just take anything that I say with a grain of salt. There's a lot of people out there who know a lot more about this than I do. I spent a lot of time doing research, um, spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos, and I thought that there was a little something missing with how people actually set this up. There's a lot of assumptions that people know what they're doing. Um, so if you have no idea what you're doing, this may be a good place to start. Number one, the types of materials that you'll need to do it. You know, you're gonna have a battery, and this is just like a lawn and garden tractor battery. Everything starts with the battery. The battery then hooks up to a charger, and the charger takes the electric current and basically charges um, the wire. So the wire that I have is a 14 gauge um, steel wire, just your standard get it from Tractor Supply. Uh, we were actually lucky enough to get some for free on the Facebook Marketplace, so that was really handy. Um, then you need a grounding rod and you need some insulated wire and then you need some posts for how you're gonna hook it up. Um, there's a million different ways of doing it. You can get like tape, you can get wire, you can get pre-made posts, you can get plastic posts that just step into the ground. Um, we went with metal T posts because that's what we had. Um, and so we just needed to get what are called uh, insulators, which are just these little plastic pieces that uh, snap on top of the T post and they basically keep the wire from touching the metal T post which would then short the circuit. Um, we also got insulated wire to go from the charger to the ground and to the wire, um, because otherwise you're gonna have a hot wire just sticking out ready for anybody to touch. Um, and we also got a cutoff switch um, so that we could turn the gate on and off um, from outside the fence. We also have these rubber gate handles that make it easy to go in and out um, you know if we it's not entirely necessary since we have the cutoff switch but it's like one of those extra precautions to have so I'm gonna go through and show you kind of what we got and uh, and we'll talk through it let's get to work all right so I've been putting on these little insulators and my wife Catherine's here. Say hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. And so I'm showing her how I've been putting these on. So I'll also show you how I've been putting them on. There's a couple different parts. This is the part where the wire is gonna wrap around. And then this is the part where it goes on top of the T-post. So right out of the box, they're pretty tight. So I've been bending this back a little bit to get it ready to go on. And I'm sure there's a million different ways to do this and this is probably the wrong way. But anyway, so I set it up like this. So I get it just like this and then just kind of bend it around and then it's going to pull this out to go around there and then it just kind of snaps right on there easy peasy so, so will this keep bears out yeah, yeah. Uh, 0.5 joules is what they recommend for bears yeah the one that we have is 0.7 <sighs> they're gonna get zapped stay away from our bees stay away from our bees where did you get the recommendation for like how much distance between the wires or how many wires you're putting up like where did those things come from uh, the basic consensus is you just need it so that when they're crawling around on the ground and smelling they hit it and they get zapped so that's why we have the one kind of low to the ground there and what kind of predators are we keeping out besides bears would like raccoons bears. try to come in well raccoons would try to come in in which case the bottom wire should also keep them out. So, but the other thing is about raccoons. So our hives are gonna be sitting right here. In order for a raccoon to have any access to the honey or the bees, he's gonna have to get up on his hind legs and do something up there, which would expose his belly and allow the bees to sting him in the belly, which apparently they really don't like. So it's more likely that the bees will keep the raccoons away and the electric wire will keep bears away. Yeah, that's the idea. John went to bee school and I didn't, so he knows more about bees than I do. But it's it's a great resource that you're here so that you can ask questions like that for people who also may didn't not have go gone to bee school. school. And what is this? So that's a grounding rod. 
So, I, again, I don't know anything about electricity, but I know, especially since the other day when we were setting up our fence and I cut the dog wire, um, that you need a ground. So, basically, this gets driven all the way in the ground and then there's a little clip that all, goes- All the way in, so it'll all just- All the way, so it's just gonna be like a little tiny bit. And then there's a clip on here, goes to the green section here. Green for ground. Green for ground. All right, so we got our wire run, and you can see, so it's just hanging out on that little uh, insulator. It goes down, making sure nothing touches the T-post. Just going around. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Uh, so next we're gonna be setting up our gate, uh, which, like I talked about in the beginning, we're gonna use those gate handles and just looping some wire up and setting them up. So here we go. All right, so we got our gate set up. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but basically it's just the wire loops onto here and then it conducts the electricity through here and then back to this other wire. And so when we want to take it out, that's how we do it. So next, I think we're going to bang this grounding rod into the ground. Let's get to work. So this hasn't moved yet. That's moved. Has it? Yeah. Anybody has a better idea of how to get these into the ground? Comment down below. Comment down below. And get into the power stance. All right, so after some difficulty, we have gotten our grounding rod in there, and we also have this uh, grounding rod clamp. So next, I guess next I'm gonna set up where the cutout switch is. And then uh, we're actually getting close to seeing this all done. Let's get to work. So this is where I have our charger housed. It's just a real simple three quarter inch plywood scrap that I had lying around. I also had some of this corrugated tin roofing and this just protects our charger from the elements. So this is what the charger looks like. And by the way, the fence is off right now. It's not hooked up. So this is my battery container, which is just like a plastic tub. And then I have down here on the bottom, I have three quarter inch plywood and then a brick to just make sure that the battery is off the ground. You know, this is a watertight container, but just in case water seeps in from the bottom, I wanna make sure that it's not gonna be sitting in a pool of water. And so coming from the charger, we have these two cables which you just hook up here, positive and negative. They came with these neat little clampy doodads. And then in here, I also have uh, my tester. And I figured it would be good to just test it here and there to make sure that there's not a short anyway. So we'll put this all back together. And so the way that this works is, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. So there's only two options. You have an option for ground and you have an option for fence. And so this wire is what goes directly to the fence. So you can see we have these insulators right here, even though we don't really need it. It's just kind of to direct the wire where I want it to go. So from the hot wire here, it goes down and then comes up this little post we buried to our shutoff switch. And so basically you just take your insulated wire and you strip it, wind it around here. And so then this piece of metal, when it comes in contact with this piece of metal, the whole fence becomes electrified. So right now it's off. If the battery were connected and everything, you'd put this together and that would complete the circuit and that would electrify the fence. So again, this is the hot wire comes in here and then it goes, to this wire here on the bottom part, which then goes down and comes to right here. So we have this looped around both the bottom wire and this piece of wire here, which then connects 
this wire electrifying this lane and then this wire electrifying this lane and this wire electrifying this way. So that's how everything gets electrified. It comes from the fence portion here to our cutoff and then once the cutoff is connected this wire goes down and connects to here. And then the ground is pretty simple. There's just you know a ground outlet right here that connects to our ground right here and so this is um, a grounding rod that's impounded into the ground and then you can see just connected there with this grounding connecting rod. Okay, so I'm pretty psyched. It is working, as you can hear, it is live. So every time there's a little click, that's when the pulse is out. So you can see right now the switch is enabled. I have my little voltage tester here. So we put one in the ground then hook it on there. You can see highest blinking light. So I'm not sure if it's coming across on the camera, but it is 7,000 volts. And then we very carefully turn off the switch. No volts. So that is great. That is great. Um, so again, be very careful whenever you're handling electric fences. Um, I do not know what it will feel like to get shocked by this. And you know what? My goal is to never find out. I have a feeling I will at some point. I'm not the smartest guy, but uh, pretty psyched with how it goes. So I'm just gonna test the other wires and make sure that all four wires are in fact charged. Um, but everything is looking good so far. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Uh, please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and be sure to subscribe. Catch you next time. Bye.